as we bring in local comedians to weigh in on this week's most viral and ridiculous stories, first up, Kanye West, or as he's now known, Ye, has fully embraced the red pill. He's reportedly decided to buy conservative social media platform Parler. Ye was recently locked out of his Twitter and Instagram accounts over anti-Semitic posts, and the platform said he violated their policies. So there's a whole lot going on here. So I had to sit down with Elena Torres to discuss this and more. Elena, what do you make of all this? Well, I think he is acting too crazy and is in need for help. You know, I feel like a lot of people who love Kanye's music, myself included, like even the people who are with him for so long and defended him so long between the shirt last week and these remarks now, everybody's like, who? I don't know him. You know, to me, it really underscores the power of money because yeah. if this were not uh, an extremely wealthy man behaving in this way, nobody would pay him any attention. But because no. he is, he's got his fans and he's got his sycophants that are actually willing to make some sense out of the garbled mess that's coming out of his mouth. 100%. 100%. If he weren't rich, he'd be in a straitjacket right now. Yeah. Nobody is standing by him at all. But because he has, a, he has such a big platform, people love to listen to it, which I think is the scariest part of the whole thing. Because hate speech can lead to hateful acts. We all know it. Yep. It doesn't matter who it comes from, right? How do you feel about listening to his music now? I mean, I'm not going to lie, Reese, I'm conflicted. Right. Because early Kanye it was some of my favorite music ever. You know, it came out in a time in my life that it really was so inspiring to me. You know, like the first three albums. And then now seeing how he is, and then you can go back and there's certain lines in the music that you think twice about. I mean, I'm conflicted about it. A classic Christmas movie is getting a horrifying twist. The Grinch is being turned into a violent horror film called the mean one, it follows a similar storyline to the original, but instead of the Grinch just pestering Whoville, he attacks and kills him. You know, there's a little something. Uh, how horrifying is this for you? What part? Horrifying is the movie or horrifying that Hollywood can't come up with any new ideas? It's yeah. like, really, of all the slasher films to make, you got to ruin the Grinch, too. Everything, like, everything has to be an old idea in a new way. Can we just think of a new idea? Yeah, uh, well, for this sounds wild, but after they made, did you see when they made Winnie the Pooh into uh, like a, a horror thing? They made, no. They had, they, yeah, there was an evil Winnie the Pooh who was out here uh, as, a, as a slasher. Once they did that, I was like, okay. I mean, the, the Grinch is much more believable as an yeah, evil villain. Yeah, if that's Pooh. true. That's true. That's believable. Like, it wasn't a direction where I was like, what? It was like, okay. There was always something scary about the Grinch as a kid, which yeah. I think might make the movie really scary to a lot of people. Cause it's like, you already were a little scared of him and now they're gonna make him commit murder. So it's just gonna take all that stuff that you had even further. I think for a lot of adults, so like that I get, but still I was like, why you gotta, why you gotta do that? The Grinch no. for me would just be like, uh, like, my like a daycare worker just deciding they're going to stop going to work and you have to take care of your own kid yeah. for the whole month of December. That's a cringe right there. That's the ultimate horror yeah. movie. <laughs> Little did I know, uh, years of studying economics at Columbia, going and doing stand up, that I one day grow up and work for daycare because we all work for daycare. And if you want to hear more from Elena, check out the Counter Currents podcast. She does that for the Arlington Draft House. You can find it on your favorite podcasting platform and she'll definitely be back.